Welcome back. In our last segment, we discussed Western biographies of the prophet and the different types of prophetic functions. The prophet of Islam, whom the Quran itself was to describe as the seal of the prophets, meaning the last of the prophets in this cycle of human history, was born in Mecca in 570 AD. He did not come into his function as prophet, however, until the age of 40 in 610 AD. For Muslims, 40 is the age of prophecy, and only Christ was born as a prophet and spoke while still in the cradle. Mecca was the religious and commercial center of Arabia. At that time, all caravans would come to Mecca from different parts of Arabia. It was near the ancient port city of Jeddah, which is still today the main port of Saudi Arabia on the Red Sea. It was religiously important because it was the location of the Kaaba, the house of God, which, according to Islam, was built by Adam as an earthly symbol of the celestial temple, the temple in heaven. According to Islam, it was rebuilt, not built, by Abraham, as we previously discussed. But between the time of Abraham and the prophet, gradually the Arabs became polytheists. And so each tribe had its own idols, which it would keep either inside the Kaaba or on the roof of the Kaaba. In Arabic, the age of paganism or polytheism is called jahiliyyah, or ignorance, a very important term in Islamic thought. But at that time, there were also non-Christian, non-Jewish, Arab monotheists, called Hanif, the plural of which is Hunafa, who followed the religion of Abraham and rejected polytheism. The Prophet was one of these. The Prophet was born into the most powerful and aristocratic family of Mecca, the Quraysh tribe of the Benu Hashim. His father and uncles were the leaders of the tribe of the Quraysh. The Prophet's father and mother died when he was very young. He was brought up by his uncle Abu Talib. The fact that the Prophet was an orphan is one reason why so much attention is paid to the care of orphans in traditional Islamic society. Islam had the most elaborate orphanages in the Middle Ages of all major civilizations. Abu Talib sent the young child to be nursed in the desert by a Bedouin tribeswoman, as was the custom of noble Arab families. There he learned the dignity of labor, the purest form of Arabic, and experienced the powerfully spiritual ambiance of the desert. Anyone in this class who's not really been in the desert doesn't know what a remarkable experience it is, one of the most amazing on the surface of the earth. It's extremely powerful. In a sense, the desert cuts you away from multiplicity. You're almost faced physically with divine unity. Since the sun shines very strongly, you have sand and the sky and light, and that's it. All of the multiplicity of the world around us, in a sense, is subdued. And the solitude of the vast desert was a very important experience for the prophet. He always loved to retire into the desert. Growing up there enabled him to gain a great deal of knowledge of the nomads, their way of life, their mores, of the tribal bonds, and so forth, because his own family lived in Mecca, and they were sedentary rather than nomadic. The prophet was given the title of El Amin, the trusted one. He was a young man when it was decided that the Kaaba should be rebuilt and a dispute arose over who should have the honor of replacing the sacred black stone in its niche. The people turned to Muhammad, who resolved the issue by having it placed on a cloth. Then each of the tribal leaders could take an edge and thus replace the stone together. This act drew the attention of a wealthy businesswoman in Mecca, 15 years older than the prophet, whose name was Khadija. She offered him to become the head of her caravans and also offered herself to him in marriage. The Prophet accepted. Khadija was the first wife of the Prophet and he led her caravans from Mecca to Damascus. On one of those journeys, he met a Christian monk who predicted he would become a Prophet. He was 25 and Khadija was 40 years old when they married. And he remained monogamous. That was his only wife until she died when he was 50 and she was 65. 
during this period according to several traditional sources in the year before the first divine revelation in 610 the prophet had several extraordinary experiences including dreams detailing the events of the following day every day for 180 days prior to the revelation these experiences of aspects of the spiritual or invisible world alim al ghaib prepared the prophet for the reception of the tremendous weight of revelation he confided these experiences to his wife khadija who played a key role in supporting him psychologically during this difficult period fraught with uncertainty that even caused the prophet to question himself then one day in 610 when the prophet retired to be in solitude with god on jebel and nur the mountain of light the revelation began with iqra as we previously discussed in the context of the quran that concludes this segment on the background of the prophet of islam up to the first revelation next time we'll discuss the spiritual significance of the events in the life of the prophet from the first revelation to the conquest of mecca